Welcome from the home of the Mets, City Field in Queens, New York. The show brings you a matchup of division rivals. It's the Miami Marlins going up against the New York Mets. Joined by my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Chavi. Chris, one guy having a big year for this club, leading the team at home runs and runs batted in, Eduardo Escobar. He, of course, leads their team at home runs. Yeah, Boog, he's been such a force at the plate, and it seems like every time he connects, the ball is traveling out of the ballpark. So when you have such a threat like that, other guys in the lineup should get good pitches to hit because they're trying to get those outs instead of having to face him in a big situation. So, almost ready to get underway, and today's starting pitcher, Jacob DeGrom. Singy, always a treat when we get to watch him work. Very crafty guy out there on the hill. A stellar career ERA in the low twos. Very tough to get to. Just when you think you've got him figured out, he flips the script. We'll see how the hitters are able to adapt to him today. So, just about set now, and now the center fielder, Leading Ryan De La Cruz. For Miami, the center fielder. Ryan the pitch de la Cruz that misses and this one is off and running first pitch 111 and the 1-0 up the middle base hit that was smoked through the infield Well, the last 10 games or so have been anything but fun at the plate for him, so that one has to feel good. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch, just shot it through the infield. Here's Joey Wendell. First pitch, just misses. Well, who would have thought Jacob DeGrom as a college shortstop and then a ninth-round pick by the Mets was going to turn into this good of a pitcher? Back-to-back -back Cy Youngs in both 2018 and 2019. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Next pitch is outside. Yeah, Boog, just incredible. You look at that benchmark of 200 innings, comfortably over that in 2018 with 217, and the sub-2 ERA, just impressive at 1.70 to lead the league. In for a strike, now it's 3-2. and two. Well, triple digits on the gun. I know there are more guys that can reach that now than in the past, but it's still impressive to watch. Nobody out, runner at first. Lifted in the air, right center field. Vargas under this one. Makes the grab, one down. Take a look at the lineup. Not the highest team batting average for this squad. They're down towards the bottom of the league in total hits, and Singy, because of that, they don't score a ton. Yeah, and Boog, I'm looking for a little better performance out of them today. I mean, if they're going to be dangerous, if they're going to be able to create scoring opportunities, they're going to have to start making some individual adjustments. A lot of players in this lineup probably aren't happy with how they've hit the ball so far. So today's a chance to get something going. Steel. Run around the move. Pitch in for a strike. The tag, and he's out at second. Usually when you see a team try to steal a base in the early innings, it tells you they want to be aggressive on offense. Try to force the defense to make plays and slow them down. That's exactly what they did right there. So we'll see if that caught stealing changes the offensive approach moving forward. Oh and two now. Went too far that time. It's one and two. No score just getting started. Top of the first. Pitch misses there. Ball two. Nice warm day here. Good baseball weather. 
Does that change anything, Chris, especially for the hitters? Absolutely. You feel so much more comfortable at the plate. You're not worried about you know, getting jammed on fastballs inside part of the plate. Uh, you can kind of be more selective instead of just looking out away so that you can get the barrel. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. No score as we head to the bottom of the first. Bottom of the first. And stepping in for New York, Janeshwi Farkas. Way to go for the Mets. The center fielder, Janeshwi Farkas. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Now a drag bunt, third base side. Bear hands it, tough play. Beats him to the bag for an out on the bunt. Batting second. Let's take a peek at the Mets lineup here. And a key piece, a guy having a big season for them, Mark Canna. And one of the most versatile players. He can bat anywhere in that order, and he can play anywhere on the field. Not just the outfield, the infield as well. Jeff McNeil up now for the Mets. Sat out last night's game, but back in there today. First nope. offering, and it just misses. Next offering is in for a strike. And a ball and two strikes. Checks the swing, appeal to third, got him! Ricky Holiday with the call. And next that for the Mets, J.D. Davis. Four hits and 11 tries so far in the series. Pitch misses inside, ball one. In the air, right field. Squeezes it, and that is that. Down in order, go to Mets. Scoreless after one. Back here at City Field. Second inning, set to go. Here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Miami, Jorge Soler. Fielder, Jorge Soler. DeGrom back to work. Nope. That one missed. The 1 0. And a foul ball. And one and two. Man, 91 on the slider right there. That's a hard one. That's a low end fastball for some guys. Next pitch is outside. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Now it's filled up. And a swing and a miss. And there's one away. Toughest pitch to hit. Fastball on the outer black. Man, sometimes you that just got to tip your cap. The third baseman, Ryan Anderson. So up next, Ryan Anderson.
First offering misses the mark. And the 1 0. In for a strike. That's strike one. Daryl Parker assigned to umpiring duty behind home plate. And Boog with DP, it's sort of a coin flip on those borderline corner pitches. Doesn't really favor one side of the plate more than the other. Sometimes you get a little extra of the plate, and sometimes you won't. It does seem like he evens it out over the course of a game, though. The 2 1. That's inside. And that's ball three. What about an umpire's height? How much of a role does that play in your experience and what the strike zone is like? Yeah, I think it pushes the strike zone up a little bit, which, you know, as a former hitter, you like that. You wanted the ball up. You didn't want to have to deal with stuff down in the zone consistently. Payoff pitch. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah, a little slider action. One down, base is empty. And there's ball four. Runner on at first with one gone. Abasail Garcia up to the plate. Well struck right field. That's back there. That's down. One hops off the wall. Lead runner holds at third. So two runners in scoring position and just one out. First pitch swing in, went up there with a the plan to be aggressive. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it. And that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Jazz Chisholm will hit next. And Boog, I'd say he's due. He swings and fouls one off. Next pitch is outside. And one and one. DeGrom, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the game, and that certainly is a benefit to him when he's in a spot like this. No score here in the second. Swing, and this one's bounced on the ground. McNeil picks it up, and the first run of the game comes across. Yeah, if you're going to be in the game in high leverage situations, you've got to be able to get the swing and miss and put hitters away. Jacob. Stallings. Jacob Stallings now. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Next offering is way upstairs. The 2-0 is in for a strike. That fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. Next offering clips the zone count even at two. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, the catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Next pitch inside. Full count now. Curveball kind of backed up on him there. I think it just slid out of the hand a little bit too soon. Payoff pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive.
Swing and a miss, and that is that. So a run on one hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of inning number two. It's the Marlins one and the Mets nothing. Welcome back. Bottom half of inning number two. And now Pete Alonso for the Mets. The first baseman, Pete Alonso. The wind of the pitch. And there's the strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. That one hammered center field. That's got a chance. Holy Toledo! Pete Alonso takes it deep, his 17th of the year, and we're all square. It's tied at one. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. The switch hitter batting Back right. Fit. The third baseman. The other way. Eduardo. And he pulls up on it. Escobar. That's a hit. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. Nice that job of driving that pitch the no other way on a line. You know, Don't hitters, man. they take so many reps man. in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Now it's Dominic Smith. That one hits oh. the dirt. 1-0. and oh. He swings and lifts one to deep center field. Way back there. That'll touch down off the base of the fence. Throw comes in. Runner stopped. Second and third. Nobody out. Stringing them together. That's three hits in a row. Put a great swing on that pitch to deep center field. And we knew it was going to be close, but just not quite enough. And I'm sure a few of his teammates might be yelling weight room at him right now. But he should definitely feel good about that one. And now it's Frankie Lindor. Seven, seven. Didn't play in the no day game stop. yesterday, so he should be fresh for this one. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Well, he's just given up three straight hits, and now behind in this count to this hitter. Might be a good time for somebody to call a timeout. Maybe the pitching coach go out there and talk to him just a little bit. Kicks and deals. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. And the pitch. Gets the outside corner with that one. Next pitch just misses, and it's three and two. Two runners in scoring position, nobody out. And a pitch stays alive. And now the lefty fouled off again, and it remains three and two.
the pitch. Base hit, one run in already. Runner stops at third, and they're at the corners with nobody out. Four hits in a row, and they're really swinging it here. Nice job going the opposite way with it, letting the ball travel and not allowing the barrel to hook around the ball. It's so frustrating when you see a good pitch and your hands roll over. It was on the outside part of the plate, and he approached it perfectly. Here's Mark Canna. Batting it. The right field. Mark Canna. First pitch, and he just misses. Runners on the corners, no outs. Lefty out of the stretch, runners at first and third. Ouch! He had him one, two, and he ends up hitting him with a pitch. Do you uh, have any memorable hit by pitches yourself? Maybe high school, college? No, but I almost did get decapitated by a foul ball at Old Tiger Stadium. Well, he's so good about trying to drive the ball to the opposite field gap in these situations. If he takes that approach, he could bust this game wide open. Well, this is a tough situation with the bases loaded, but the healthiest mindset is just try to get out one hitter at a time. And the lefty with the 0-1. In the air to left center. Base hit. One run is in. Another comes in to score, and they lead by three gets the job done as he brings home a pair. Hooked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely. And that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. So up next for New York, Janeshwi Farkas. The center fielder, number four, Janeshwi Farkas. And first offering is fouled off. Canna on second. McCann at first with no outs. Next offering is in for a strike. The real threats are coming up. Already given up a home run in this inning. He's going to really have to bear down. The pitch. That one just misses. Too close for me, partner, to take that 0-2 fastball, but for whatever reasons, he let it go by. He's still in the at-bat. I don't think he'll let the next one go. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. Runners at first and second with one gone. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Kelly just threw that fastball by him, elevated, and if you're not looking up in that location, very difficult to catch up to, especially with that velocity. Next offering is down low, and it's two and one. The 2 1. And that one is lifted in the air. De La Cruz makes the grab. And there's two away. Now batting the designated hitter, JD. Now it's JD Davis. So I ain't saving you a clean house. Do you think that's just a statement? Then you ludicrous like it's word of mouth. I ain't new to what I'm 
I'm about. Excuse me, miss. Like, what's your name? In there for strike one. Not what he's looking for there in the OO count. Looks like he wants the ball down in the zone. Next offering is in for a strike. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. Two outs. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Nine men come to the plate for score. We head on now to the top of the third. It's the Mets four and the Marlins one. Back here in Queens, out of the third inning, Miguel Rojas at the plate. The, the shortstop, Miguel Rojas. DeGrom back to work. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. He needs a quick one, two, three this time around. Last inning through a lot of pitches. And a pitch. Foul ball. He's mixing his pitches really well late on that fastball after seeing the changeup. See if he can elevate one. I think if he does, he'll get the swing and miss. In the air out towards right center. Vargas, as he glides to his left, snags it on the run. And there's one down. The center fielder, number 14, Ryan. De La Cruz. So the lineup flips over. Here's the center fielder, Brian De La Cruz. And he's already singled in this game. First offering misses the mark. This is a very important inning here. After scoring all those runs, you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down. The offense has worked hard. It's shut down inning time. And the next pitch is way outside. Back to back breaking pitches away. You get the feeling as a hitter that the pitcher's afraid of you, that he doesn't want to challenge you. So I think the confidence level is raised right here. Next pitch inside. Three balls, no strikes. There's the strike, three and one. And the righty deals. And it's strike two. And that's ball four. Oh, looking for a swing and miss right there or for the ump to help him out and make a call with that last now pitch, that but neither happened. Close pitch, but Joey a good take to earn that walk. Wendell. So now here's the DH. Joey Wendell. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. In there, and it's 0-1. There was a high-velocity fastball in the zone. I think a little frustration from walking the previous hitter. He's got good stuff. Pitch inside the zone and trust it. Left hand hitter waits. One. That one misses, and that's ball one. Hey. Next offering is in for a strike. Goodness, I think he just took the best pitch he's going to see in this at bat. You don't get many like that in that location. I don't know if you take that pitch against any pitcher out there on the mound. That's Next one out. misses, and the count is even two and two. DeGrom checks the runner, and he's back in there. Two-two now. Inside, and it hit him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. 
Well, that one might sting now for a bit, but it helps the team and it boosts the OBP boog. Sometimes that trade off is worth it, but you know, sometimes it's not. Aguilar batting for the second time, and that's strike one. Next pitch misses inside. Now one and two. De La Cruz over at second. Wendell over at first with one away. Next offering way off the plate. The pitch. Got him swinging. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Well, it can be so tough as a hitter to pull yourself out of an extended slump, one that lasts for several games, even a week or more. No, right now, he's really in one, so I'm sure his mind is all over the place, racing, having a hard time sleeping, trying to figure out what can get him back on track, back to feeling more comfortable and settled in in the box. Solaire, batting with one down, takes a strike. And the right hater deals. Next offering misses down and away. It's a big opportunity right here, but I love the way he's slowing the game down. He's shrinking his zone, making sure he gets the pitch that he wants to hit. Tying run at the plate. That one fouled off two and two. Here comes a pitch. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Two outs, a couple of base runners at first and second. Chases that one, and that is that. A couple of strikeouts with runners on. Sometimes you got to really bear down, and he did just that. Nice job of getting out of the jam and out of the inning. Back here at the ballpark, and now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. Here we go. For the, men. the first baseman, Pete Alonso. pitch off the mark there and that's ball one the wind and the pitch in the air right field pretty well struck back there into second easily with a leadoff double. Two hits for him in this one, both for extra bases. Got to feel good about that. Put a pretty good jolt into that one. Great swing, nice balance and weight transfer. And he got it to drop in out there in the deep part of the field. And now it's switch hitting third baseman Eduardo Escobar. Up next for the net, the third baseman. Eduardo. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Next offering misses. Two balls, no strikes. And here it comes. On the corner for a strike. In today's game, not that many fastball counts, but hitters still in the back of their minds, they're looking for one. 2-0 changeup call right there. Excellent pitch selection to go with. 
And he deals. Puts it in the air out towards left center. De La Cruz settles underneath it. And there's one down. The left fielder, number two, Dominic. Dom Smith stands in. Three for 11 in the series coming in. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. And there's two down. Boy, that was a hanging breaking ball right there. I think he tried to do a little bit too much. Now Sometimes those eyes can get Shortstop. really big. I think Francisco. his swing broke down as well, and that's what caused Lindor. him to pop it up. Now up to hit Francisco Lindor. He's got pop, which is a little sneaky because he's so comfortable with taking his base hits to the opposite field. But he can jump you if you make a mistake. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. When you're struggling out there on the mound, hitters know that there'll be plenty of opportunities within the at-bat to try to get something to hit hard. That one out to right. Garcia makes the catch, and that'll do it. Mets leave one, but they lead it 4-1. to one. And welcome back out of the fourth. And now for the Marlins, Ryan Anderson. Off for the Marlins, the third baseman, Ryan Anderson. The wide to kick the pitch. And a strike. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Comes up empty on the swing, 0 oh. 2 now. Spin rate's outstanding on that high fastball. Really tough to hit. The 0-2. I got to count one and two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Now one away. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically likes to shoot the ball the other way. Batting, but that time, a little anxious. Abisail, Garcia. Now it's the right fielder, Avasail Garcia. And that's in there for strike one. Kicks and fires. There's a strike. And now one and two. And a pitch. Swings and misses. And there are two outs. Well, that was a tough slider right there. He couldn't get a piece of it just to try to keep the at-bat alive. And hitters will tell you that slider, when a guy's able to really tunnel the pitch where it looks like a fastball and then late has really good bite, so tough to lay off of because you've made the decision you don't want to get beat by a fastball and then you swing and you miss you go back to the dugout shaking your head Chisholm stands in now and watches strike one left hand batter waits that one's in there 0 and 2 And look out, that one gets him. The second man he's plunked in this one. Oh, he's only an out away from getting through the inning, but he Up just lost control Marlins. for a brief moment the there. Catcher. It's not the end of the Jacob. world, but don't let one mistake turn into another. Get your focus back right here. Stones in the box now, no balls and a strike. 
DeGrom checks the runner. Chisholm back on a dive. At the belt and fires. And that's down and away. The 1 1. Outside corner, there's a strike. DeGrom rolls over. Chisholm dives back in safely. And now it's one and two. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. And that is that. Marlins lead one. And they trail it 4 1. Ready to go, bottom four. And stepping in for New York, Leading Mark Cannon. The, the right fielder, Mark. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Swing and a miss. One, one. Well, he hasn't quite settled in out there. Four runs in three innings. He's going to have to have some quick one, two, three innings to pitch deep into this ball game. The 0-1. Ball one. That one inside, two and one. Kicks and deals. In the air, out towards left center. And it's caught for the out. Up next for the Mets, the catcher, James. James McCann in now. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Well, a good slider from an opposite handed pitcher has to stay in that tunnel just a little bit longer. Otherwise, recognition can cause you to barrel it up. And right there, the hitter clearly couldn't do anything with it. And the 0 1. On the ground to the left. Rojas with the throw to first. Two up, two down. The center fielder, number four. Here's the Mets' leadoff man, Jadeshwi Farkas. First pitch just misses. Two down, nobody on. Out towards left center. Drops in for a hit, couldn't run it down. The batter, number one, second baseman, Jeff McNeil. Runner at first with two away. Next to hit, Jeff McNeil. Rogers checks over to first, and he's back. In there for strike one. And a pitch. All right, now he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls, but at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone.
That one the other way. In plenty of time to first. That is the inning. That's strand one as they hold on to a 4 1 lead. Back here at City Field. Ready now for the fifth inning. Digging in, Miguel Rojas. The shortstop, Miguel Rojas. The wind of the pitch. Ball one there. And there's a strike. Good heater at 98. Back to back fastballs in. That last one called for a strike. Probably go away, but look for him to come back in there to try to finish you off. Next offering is fouled back. Next pitch is outside. On the ground, right side. Over to first, and the leadoff man set down in their half of the fifth. The batter, the center fielder, Ryan De La Cruz. So the batting order turns over, and up next for Miami, Ryan De La Cruz. Four for 12 in the series so far. In there, and it's 0-1. The next pitch misses, and it's a ball to strike. <laughs> next pitch downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. That one misses in the dirt. Line drive caught. Now batting. The designated hitter, Joey. Wendell. And at the plate for Miami, Joey Wendell. And yeah, that's in there for strike one. Action in the Mets bullpen. Joey Lucchese, the left handed reliever, appears to be getting loose. Sapucky warming up as well. The 0 1. Hey. Yeah, that now skips into dirt. Two. Now just about to hit that century mark, 100 pitches for this game. Oh. Next one just misses. <laughs> and the count's even at two. And now two and two. And now the count filled up three and two. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Three two now. Lifted in the air out to left. Smith makes the catch and that'll do it. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Mets four and the Marlins one. Welcome back, and now the DH, J.D. Davis. Leading up, for the Mets, the designated hitter, J.D. Davis.
The pitch. That's in there. Strike one. Going oh two now. That one fouled off. The pitch. That one ran inside, almost got him. Got him. And one away. You know, variant speeds can be just as useful for a pitcher as movement. As you see right there, it really wasn't a great location. But the fact that the velocity change had the hitter off balance, and that's all you got to do sometimes. Here's Pete Alonso. And first offering is fouled off. And now the lefty. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Zach Pop appears to be getting loose. Head getting loose as well. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And now two gone. Well, clearly just anxious right there, and understandably so in an 0-2 count. You feel like you've got a lot of plate to cover, and you don't want to strike out, and you end up striking out. That's just one of those pitches where it's not over the plate, but because you committed to it as it was leaving his hand, by the time you realized it wasn't going to be in the zone, it's too late to hold up your swing. Now, Eduardo Escobar. Next pitch has popped up. Stones makes the catch, and that'll do it. Nothing doing for the Mets, but they lead it four to one. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Joey Lucchese, trying to protect this lead. Well, at this point in the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and we need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Back here at the ballpark, start of the six, John Shambi with Chris Singleton. And leading off, Jesus Aguilar. The pitch. And there's the strike. Well, in this one, the offense has sputtered. Somebody's got to find a way to get on, keep the line moving, and manufacture at least one run. Then maybe you get two or three. Oh, one down. And that misses off the outside edge. Stirring in the bullpen for the Mets. Miguel Castro getting loose out there. Lugo getting cranked up as well. The 1-1. One -one. And a foul ball. Well, the hitter's got his timing down for the breaking ball. If you're a pitcher, if you can get that fastball in on the hand, it's going to be very difficult for that hitter to get the barrel to it. And a base hit on the line. He needed that one. It's been a tough stretch at the plate lately. Now nice line drive to the pull side, met it out front, but just stayed Jorge. through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Jorge Soler up at the plate. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ball game. Swings through that one for strike one. Swing and a miss. One and two. The 
pitch. On the ground right side. Four. Six. Oh, he throws it away. Well, no trouble getting the double play started, but clearly some trouble on that return throw to first. I'm not sure if the runner going into second had a part in that or if it was something like a bad transfer. Either way, could have been two outs, but instead, they got to work around a runner in scoring position now. Brian Anderson, the next up for the Marlins. First offering misses the mark. The lefty, the 1 0. And now 2 and nothing is that one missed below the knees. Misses with the 2 0, and he's fired three straight outside the strike zone. Here comes a pitch. And ball four to a board. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk and guy at the play was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. And now the right fielder, Abasail Garcia. That one's in there, 0 and 1. offering is in for a strike quickly in an 0-2 hole you're going to have to give something up here in terms of power if you want to put the ball in play with any authority the pitch in the dirt it's a one two Two out. So far, just one of those days for this lineup. You get a couple of runners on, and you're looking at having a big inning, and that strikeout right there just pours water on the fire. You look for the next hitter to step up and try to do something, pick up his teammate and his club. Stepping in, Jazz Chisholm, with just one hit in 11 at bats in the series so far. Here's a strike. Chases that one out of the zone. That ends the frame. Six, seven, eight, two in the bottom of the six. It's the Mets four and the Marlins one. New pitcher for the Marlins, Grant Dayton. It's his job to keep his team in the game. Number 75, Grant Dayton. Back here in Queens, ready to go for the last half of the inning. Here's the left fielder, Dominic Smith. The left fielder, Dominic Smith. And the pitch. Good yep. eye right there. All one, no strike. The 1-0. -oh. That's through there for a strike. Left-hand hitter waits. And down on strikes he goes. Lead-off man retired in the sixth. Well, oftentimes that's the pitch he's trying to set up, the curveball. He'll lean on now it pretty it. heavily. So Good you got to be expecting Let it. Look go. for it and sell out so you don't Mentor. miss it when you get it. Like that. Bouncing up and down like that. 
Here's Francisco Lindor. In there for strike one. offering popped in the air right field Lindor retired two down the right fielder number 19 Mark Canna. Mark Canna up now for the Mets with this kind of lead he can swing freely try to hit the ball out of the park do what he loves to do In there, and it's 0-1. And, Two outs. And now the count is even. And he deals. Hammered down the right side, but foul. offering his foul back. And a pitch. Down to the dirt, swing and a miss. Got him. Inning over on the strikeout. And the Mets go down 1-2-3 as they hold on to a 4-1 lead. We go to the top of the seventh. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Jacob Stallings. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. Lucchese back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Why the kick the pitch? Way out front for strike two. Filthy changeup right there. Just pulled the string. Swing and a miss. And he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Miguel Rojas now at the plate. Miguel Rojas. First offering and it just misses. Counts one and oh. The next two. offering misses. And that's ball two. Now fly ball to right center. Canna racing over to make the catch. Back to the top of the lineup. Next to hit, Brian De La Cruz. First pitch, and he just misses. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a high fly ball down the right field line. Makes the grab on the run. And that'll do it. And the Marlins down quietly. And this is still a 4 1 ball game. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Lewis Head. And his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance.
bottom of the inning. And now the catcher comes up to him. James Lee McCann. For the, Mets. the catcher. James. The wind of the pitch. McCann. There's the strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0-2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spit on anything that's down. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And they get the leadoff hitter in the seventh. Back to the no, top of the Mets fielder. order. Jadeshwi Fargus Just digs in three. now. Fargus. And that's in there for strike one. Miami's bullpen with some action. Zach Pop, the right-handed sinker baller. He looks to be readying himself. Holloway, the hard-throwing right-hander, up as well. That's a strike. He doesn't seem to like to pitch up. Hasn't offered on either one of those pitches. 0-2 count now. I think the guy's going to climb the ladder out there. And the righty deals. Nope, and takes ball. low for ball one. And that one moves his feet. Righty to the plate. And another ball. <laughs> Foul ball there. Righty delivers. Up the middle. Into the outfield base hit. Multi hit game for him now, and with the lack of results now he's been having lately, I'm sure he's feeling some relief. Yeah. Just kept it simple, played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from, and there's just no one there to knock it down. And now here's Jeff McNeil. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Vargas over at first with one away. Pitch misses. One ball, one strike. Right hander kicks deals. And yeah, that's outside. Throw to first. Kicks and fires. This one high in the air to left center. Solaire on the move. Flashes the leather on the run and catch. Two away. Now batting. The designated hitter. JD. Now it's J.D. Davis. Davis. So I say you will clean the house. Do you think this is a statement? Then you ludicrous like it's word of mouth. I ain't new to what I'm about. Excuse me, miss. Like, what's in there? First pitch doesn't find the zone. Ball one, no strike. Yeah. Next offering is in for a strike. That hits the dirt. And it's two and one. Next pitch misses. Ball three. 
Pickoff move to first, and he's back in safely. And the 3 1. Swing and a ball lifted left field, and it's foul. 3 2, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. Back to work, 3 2 now. Soler sizes this one up. Three two now. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And that is the third out of the inning. Mets leave one, but they lead it four to one. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Trevor May, and he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. Trevor May. Ready to begin the eighth. Now the number two hitter, Joey Wendell. Leading off for the Marlins, the designated hitter, Joey Wendell. And here it comes. Got to keep things airtight defensively right here. On your toes, ready to make a play. If you can get this to the ninth with a three-run lead, it should be a W. He swings and drives one out to deep left field. That's back. Turning, looking, and that one is gone. He sends one out the opposite way, and they inch closer. It's 4-2. Oh, that one got in the jet stream on a line drive. We saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders, which is usually bad news. And all of a sudden, they're back in this ballgame. And now it's Jesus Aguilar. The first baseman, number 99, Jesus Aguilar. And that one fouled off. And fouled off. At the belt and fires. That one missing inside. And now it's even up. Right-handed reliever. That one down the line, and it goes just foul. Clearly trying to stay back a little bit longer for that changeup as he fouls that fastball back. Out towards right center field. Vargas, long run into the gap. And puts the squeeze on that. And there's one away. Up next for the Marlins, the left fielder, Jorge Soler. Jorge Soler, the next to hit. Hi. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Looks like he sacrificed a pitch right down the middle for tracking and timing. Some good hitters will do that.
The 0 1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. One one now. Pitch misses there, and a count two and one. Next offering down low and in the dirt. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. 3-1 is on the way. Swing and a miss. 3-2 now. For this guy, it's truly a battle when he steps into the box. Only one thing on his mind, seeing that pitch out of the hand and hit it hard somewhere. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. How big a deal is that walk? I don't think it's a big deal because if you pitch to the previous hitter with the power he has, he can hit home run. I think it was a calculated walk. We'll see how it pays off here. Anderson batting with one down, takes a strike. The tying run at the plate. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Quickly into an 0-2 count. Both pitches were down in the zone. I think you set your sights a little bit higher because you'll have a tendency to chase if you look down in that area. And a pitch. That one misses. And a count one and two. The one-two. And a swing and a miss. Two gone. With that kind of velocity, an elevated fastball, even if it's still in the strike zone, can be tough for hitters to get on top of. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, and he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. Number 39, Edwin Now for the Marlins, Abasail Garcia. And that one fouled off. The 0-1. Looking very settled on the mound here in the eighth. One more out, but probably handed off to their closer for the ninth with at least a two-run lead. And a pitch. Solaire leads off first with two down to the inning. And a one two again. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Good job of damage control right there. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's now 4-2. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Zach Pop. And he'll do his best to keep this close. Bottom of the eighth, and stepping in for New York, Pete Alonso. Leading up for the Mets, the first baseman, Pete Alonso. The pitch just missed. And the 1-0. To account, you really don't want to give in here. You've got to work the edges. Really execute a pitch. Hopefully you can get back into this count. And the right-hander deals. Misses off the plate. And that's ball three. So definitely a little wild right out of the gate. Well, it could be a little tough coming from the bullpen mound to this mound, but you've got to find a way to get ahead in the count quickly. He hasn't. We'll see how this at-bat turns out. 
the pitch. And there's the automatic. The pitch. High fly ball, pretty well struck out towards right center. That one is back. Holy Toledo! Pete Alonso with a shot to the opposite field. His 18th home run of the season, and they add on. It's 5-2. Singy, he's been red hot. Yeah, another big swing of the bat for him. Man, he is really seeing the ball well in this one. There was a fastball down the middle. I don't think the hitter recognized the pitch, but once he did, was quick enough to get it in play with some authority. He got that up and out of here. And next for the Mets, Eduardo Escobar. Now batting third baseman, Eduardo Escobar. And the first pitch misses for ball one. The 1 0. Swung on, popped up on the infield. Aguilar drifts towards it, hauls it in, and there's one away. The left fielder, number two, Dominic Smith. Dominic Smith will hit next. First pitch, just misses. Kicks and deals. And that's a strike. Definitely not a pitch location you're expecting up there as a hitter when you know the guy's got a good sinker ball. If he can get in that location, boy, you've got to look top to bottom, and that's going to make it very difficult to hit. Next offering is in the dirt. Left hand batter waits. Fought off foul. Next pitch is outside. So now three and two. Laser base hit. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch you could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. Get high in the air. There it goes. See ya. Francisco Lindor sent it out. Home run number 10 of the year. It's 7 2. Anytime you have a pitch down the middle of the plate, the percentages go up for the hitter to do damage, even if it's a pretty good sinker like that one. Nice piece of hitting there at the plate. Pitching change here, Jordan Holloway. He's being eased into the game here with the bases empty. Bases empty, one away. Mark Canna up now for the, the Mets. Right fielder, number 19, Mark Canna. And first offering is fouled off.
That misses. One and one. Popped up. Chisholm gets under it. He's got it. And there's two down. Now batting. The catcher. James. McCann. Here is James McCann. First offering misses the mark. Action in the pen down there. Anthony Bender appears to be warming for Don Mattingly. Next offering is in for a strike. Next one misses, and it's two and one. Next offering is down low. Now three and one. And now a full count. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Man, that's a tough one to take on the full count, but I guess he saw it really well. It's a Number really nice fielder. plate appearance. Number four. And now the center Number fielder, three. Jadeshwi Farkas. Farkas. And a foul ball. Pitch. McCann off of first with two away. And there's a foul ball. And a swing and a miss. And that will end the inning. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. Last chance coming up here for the Marlins. Music made me smile, some people called it rhythm and soul. I could never get enough of this. And welcome back. And stepping in is the speedy Jazz Chisholm. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. Edge of the zone for a strike. That's strike one. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. These guys today are so great with handling velocity. They're now seeing batter. high speeds day after Jake day, and a nice job of turning that one around. Here's the catcher, Jacob Stallings. First pitch, not close. And what makes him even quicker is the fact that he's so dialed in on the pitch as it's moving through the hitting zone. He can see how that hitter's lined up, what he's trying to do, and where that pitch is going to end up, which gives him that really quick first step. And that's why he makes so many great plays. That one lifted to left. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. Now batting. Shortstop. Miguel. And up next for Miami, Miguel Rojas. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Next offering misses, and now 2-0.
Next offering is fouled back. The 2 1. Foul ball. And a pitch. And down on strikes. And the Marlins with just one out left. Well, oh, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch. Tailing away from the hitter, low and away with some good action at the end. You know, even if he gets the bat to that ball, it's probably just a weak ground ball to the opposite side. Tell you what, that's a tremendous two strike pitch. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. In there for strike one. The pitch. That misses. And now it's even one and one. Good speed on the base pass. He handles the bat very well. I wouldn't be surprised if the skipper puts on some type of hit and run or a run and hit. Down to their final strike. Got him looking. And that is the ball game. I think people might be surprised to see how many pitchers have collected 200 saves in their careers. It's not a lot. But he's just joined that ball. Keeps climbing that leaderboard save after save. 7-2 your final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Chompy saying so long.